I recently watched an interesting YouTube video by David Bennett Piano, where he invited some YouTube famous pianists. That sounds kind of offensive. Uh, piano players who create content on YouTube. Brilliant piano players who also create brilliant content on YouTube. Anyway, he sent these guys a backing track to improvise over to see what each of them had come up with. And I thought the results were quite interesting and sort of linked in with something that I've been pondering recently. So I got the inspiration from his video, from a video that YouTube guitar guru Paul Davids did a little while ago. He wrote a backing track and he sent it out to a bunch of guitarists to improvise over. Now Mr. Bennett took that same backing track of Mr. Davids and sent it out to a bunch of piano players rather than guitarists. And the piano players he chose to send it out to were Charles Cornell, Jeff Schneider, Amy Nolte, Nari Sol, and Sanga Nuna. Now, I hadn't come across Sanga Nuna before this, but the other four, I'm really familiar with their work and really value the content they put out. And you should be checking them out too if you haven't already. So with the likes of Charles Cornell, Amy Nolte, and Jeff Schneider, who, from the emphasis of their channels and their obvious expertise, come from a jazz background. So you might expect that their improvisation over this chord progression was full of the language that they speak so fluently and might sound something like this. Okay, they probably would have done a better job than that, but my point is that it's filled stylistically with jazz vocabulary. Now, on the other hand, we had the super talented Nare Sol. She's an incredible musician and piano player. I've got no background in classical music, but her playing and her content that she puts out, it's wonderful. Now, Nare Sol is obviously someone who is deeply steeped in the traditional classical piano repertoire and technique and composition. So you might assume that her improvisation over this chord progression would reflect the language that she speaks so fluently. Maybe something like this. Yeah, sorry, that was terrible. You can obviously tell that I've not had classical piano background. And she would have done it a hundred times better, but hopefully you get my point. Now, what I was trying to demonstrate there was that those two examples didn't sound great. And it wasn't just because I was playing them, but because I was trying to shoehorn a certain style of music onto a track that was a completely different style of music. Now, I do urge you to go and watch the video and hear what they did play. Obviously, once you've finished watching this video, I'll put a link in the description. Now what I felt happened across all of their improvs is that they weren't too dissimilar and they all to some degree conformed to what we might say was the expectation of the song or the style of the song. There was this uncommunicated expectation of what was appropriate or correct for the song. I love the show Later with Jules Holland. 
It's a really popular music TV show in the UK. Jules Holland is the presenter. He has a bunch of really top bands and musicians on who will play a few live songs, then he'll interview them as well. Great show. Now, Jules, the presenter, is a really great boogie-woogie piano player. And he used to be the keyboard player in the band Squeeze. True story. Now, on his show, for maybe just one song of the night, Jules will sit in and play piano with one of the bands or one of the artists. Now, unlike these great musicians who are submissive to the song and style of music, I often find myself getting frustrated with Jules Holland, who can't help but put his little boogie-woogie licks over everybody's music. I even randomly saw this meme the other day that someone else had created that talks about locking Jules Holland's piano to, as it says, prevent extraneous boogie-woogie piano accompaniment during your band's Later With Jules Holland performance. It's good to know I'm obviously not the only person who feels like this. I hope he never sees this. So there are typical techniques, parameters, choices, or rules, if you like, to playing the boogie-woogie style correctly. But if you take those rules and you apply them to a different style of music, it doesn't work. One of my favourite piano players of all time is Larry Goldings. And I think he's a master of serving the song and the style of music he's playing. He understands what it means to authentically be playing for John Mayer one night and then the next night playing with his jazz organ trio. But I think this should be expected of any half-decent musician, if you ask me. And this speaks a bit to something that I've been thinking about recently. Over the last eight months or so, I've been creating music theory content on here. And I keep sort of coming up against this competing idea of this is how you do this in music. You do this here for this reason. In order for this to qualify as this, you must do this. You should only use this technique here. But then at the same time, on the other side, anything goes. Do whatever you want. Music should be a personal expression. If you like it, then it's valid. Explore, experiment. Tools, not rules. Sometimes I feel like these things can butt up against each other. But I do also feel like they can coexist within performance and composition. And I think this is a good example of that. If you want to play your music in the same style as Jules Holland or Gaelic folk music or jazz or country music, whatever it is, there are certain expectations that you need to meet in order to achieve that style. And even within some styles, there are sub-genres that have different expectations that you need to meet in order to be playing that style correctly or authentically. For me, the expression of music exists in so many different forms. And I think it all comes down to intention. What are you trying to do with your music? Are you just trying to connect with people and make them feel a certain way emotionally? Then the world's your oyster. You've got plenty of different vehicles that you could choose in order to do that. But if you want to play boogie-woogie piano because you love boogie-woogie, then there's certain things that you have to do in order to achieve that. I think if your main purpose is to write music that will make people dance or laugh or cry, then you've got a variety of ways to do that. And if you do that with rudimentary harmony, or if you don't follow theoretical norms, it doesn't diminish the value of the music that's being created. What do you think? It does get my nose up when people get snobby about music that isn't complicated. You know, for me, it really comes down to whether or not the artist, the creator has achieved their intention with the the music that they've created and um, that's something i've been thinking about recently my wife's not interested in this sort of stuff so i thought i'd talk to you about it thanks for being here